on to part two. Um, this isn't something you have to do every single time, but it definitely helps out your workflow and it will help kind of save you on future tracks. I'm going to create an instrument rack. Um, before I do that, I'm just gonna kind of drop the plugins on the track that I might wanna use. So I'm gonna bring in like a overdrive distortion unit. Um, I will bring in, we already have a filter that we can automate on inside of Massive. So we'll just use that. Um, and then maybe we'll do, you know, you could do some kind of reverb that wouldn't be super typical of, of uh, a sub bass, but if you wanted to have these things kind of change and evolve over time, you could have that reverb kind of automate during a breakdown section or something like that. Um, so let's go ahead and put those on there. Okay. So I'm gonna take these plugins, I'm gonna condense the EQ because we've already got that kind of set up. And then to get an instrument rack going, I'm just going to select all the plugins by holding shift and then do command G, which is our group function, but also works for creating racks. So command G created the instrument rack, as you can see in the bottom left corner. And then, um, I'm just gonna do a quick setup on macros because macros are kind of the easiest way to route all of the modulation that you want to happen so that you can just automate you know, one parameter, one macro instead of a couple different parameters because uh, sometimes automation can get a little bit messy. Okay, um, so on the instrument rack underneath the power button, we have this macro control. I'm gonna turn that on and then to start mapping these um, parameters, all you have to do is hit the map button on the top of the rack and then anything that you can automate uh, or map, sorry, to these macros will turn green in this case. Um, so let me turn these off. For now, I'm gonna take macro one, call it filter. Macro two will be, you know, space. We'll do like the reverb, maybe we'll bring a delay in here as well. And then disto for distortion. Um, and so I'm just gonna go through and start to map these out to the actual plugins that we have. Um, for our filter, as I said, we already have the filter, the low pass filter inside of Massive that we can use. So I'm just gonna go into Massive, click on that. It should bounce out that parameter and you should see it on the side of your third party plugin. Um, if, it, if it doesn't, you also have this configure button you can use as well. So I have that. Um, I'm gonna basically probably just map that for the filter control right now. Um, and then I'm gonna go to space and I'm just gonna start to shape uh, let me get out of map mode. I'm gonna shape a really basic reverb, and then all I'm gonna uh, assign to the macro is the dry wet. Now you could do dry wet and decay time or size. It's all uh, up to you and how you want to start design, uh, designing your sound. But that's what I'm gonna do for now. So map, click on dry wet, map it, and then um, let's also get another plugin here for some kind of delay or something. So let's use like a simple delay. And then same thing, I'm just going to map the dry wet. So click on that guy, go to space, hit map. And then now what we should see is both of these dry wet parameters moving as we move that one space macro. And there we go. Um, when you click into map mode, you can also go up to the top left corner of Ableton and it changes your browser into your macro mappings, um, parameters and settings. So you can set the range for these if you want to. Um, the delay is probably gonna quickly get a little bit overpowering as is the reverb. So I'm just gonna limit those a little bit um, and that should be good for now. Um, on the distortion, I'm just gonna do this one overdrive. I could go through and get like a bit crusher or some kind of third party plugins in here, but I think it should be good for now. Um, so instead of kind of just setting them up like I did with the reverb and delay, I'm gonna let the sound play back and then just kind of customize the overdrive to where I want it to sit. Let me open up our filter. And then now I'm gonna start working on the overdrive. So I, I don't want it to be super crunchy. I'm gonna take out a little bit of the low end because if we're if we're automating this, it's because we want change to happen. So don't want it to stay too deep, or too bassy. Okay, so map that to the distortion, and then now
So it just gives us more control and we can kind of uh, change the time or the, the sound over time and have it evolve, which is important. Um, now you could go through and start automating those and uh, you could even duplicate this to another track and kind of give that new track different settings so you have multiple um, kind of layers to choose from. Um, for now, I just wanted to get the process done and out there. Um, but what's really cool about these instrument racks, and this is probably my favorite part about them, is not only being able to kind of consolidate everything into one nice rack or bundle, but being able to save that and pull it back into any future session at any time. Um, so just like saving most plugins, you have this little kind of like floppy disk icon right here. Um, so as soon as you click on that, it's gonna open up your user library and it's going to go inside of presets, instruments, because we're using an instrument rack, and then under instrument racks, uh, it'll just ask you to name it. So you can see I use these a lot. I have a ton of bass lines and synths and you know things like that that uh, I necessarily wouldn't wanna have to recreate and do the sound design for every single time I want them. So I can just go in here and pull them immediately. So Merc, Deep, Sub. Cool, so there it is right there. And then anytime I wanna use that, I just drag it onto a MIDI track and everything is good to go. Now, I only set up three macros. There are eight macros here. You can go through and completely customize every single parameter to be mapped to those macros. And so they really, really evolve over time. Um, but at least now we got a couple of things set up so we can start to add some variation. Um, so that would be step two. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.